What up everybody? It's Big G, and today I'm here to show you all the newest addition to our outdoor porch. It's a flower container garden with a decor mimicking a beach landscape. 50 inches long, 40 inches wide, by 5 inches deep, it is comprised of five different sections. So, without further ado, let's break it down. The first section is a plastic landscape edging, which is held in the ground by eight iron stakes. There's not much else to say about this border, but it helps keep the landscape's decor in the circle while keeping the grass and weeds out of reach. Now onto the second section is a blockade of 28 lightning whelk shells, as well as one large queen conch shell. The conch and whelks that make up the border range in different sizes, the smallest of the bunch being only 5 inches, and the largest being over 10 inches. I found a few of these exploring the beach, but the rest were actually given to us by our next door neighbor. This was around the time I first started the water lily pond. Originally, they would have been placed along the border of the rock garden. However, I didn't have enough to go around at the time, so I wondered, what else could I use them for? Then it hit me. If I couldn't use the shelves for that garden, why not just make a new one strictly for them? Thus, the idea for a seashell garden was born. Moving on to our third and largest section is a seashore of seashells. Because, don't you know, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyways, this layer takes about two thirds of the garden size, containing well over a thousand shells and fossils. Most were found by me and my family whenever we'd go out exploring, but a small 10% were bought at a local gift shop. Some were found quite recently. Others have been in our collection well before I was born. And whether it be at the beach, fresh water, or even inland, there was no shortage of shells to be found. With so many different kinds of shells contained within this section, I wasn't able to go through and identify every specific individual species before I could finish it, though I was able to recognize a few of the common names used to distinguish the shells, and I'll go through them in alphabetical order. We got apple shells, arc arcs, augers, Barnacles, Bubbles, Buttons, Serrets, Clams, Cockles, More Conchs, Cones, Coquinias, Coral Stones, Cowrie, or Cowries, I ain't talking about nutritional facts, Crab Exoskeletons, Crab Claws, Crowns, Dolphins, Ears, Eyes, Horns, Jewel Boxes, Limits, Lobster Claws, Lobster Antennas, Lucians, Marginellas, Murexes, Mussels, Nerites, Olives, Oysters, Ramhorns, Scallops, Spikes, Starfish, Trochuses, Tulips, Venuses, 
more whelks, whirls, and wings. Each individual shell was carefully placed in the garden, with the nicer shells on top and the more broken shells on the bottom. This section took the longest to complete by far, mainly because I would run out of shells when trying to complete it. Whenever I'd stop for the day, I would cover the garden with a black tarp, so I'd be able to continue from where I left off. Aside from being a cool landscape decoration, they are 100% environmentally friendly. Since they are all natural, the shells will gradually break down over time, providing valuable nutrients to the soil. Even the animals have taken advantage of this new environment. Ants are often seen scurrying across the shells in search of food and bringing it back to their colony. This, of course, attracts larger predators, like lizards, which feed on the ants and use the shells as a basking spot to kick up their metabolism. Moving on to our fourth section is a perimeter of 57 pieces of sea glass. Normally used for jewelry and art pieces, sea glass can be used just as well in landscaping, as it certainly makes a good contrast to the seashells. Forming two circles around the pot, the glass's texture not only mimics the movement of the ocean's waves, but the color as well. We now have come to our center, a ceramic plant pot which houses a sterile variety of Lantana Camara. Lantanas, like succulents, are a very hardy plant that require little maintenance. They prefer moist, well-drained soil, but they can tolerate little water during droughts. They can also tolerate heat, humidity, salt, and poor soil. In fact, Lantanas are often found around warm coastal areas, like beaches. This robust evergreen shrub is currently 22 inches tall and 28 inches wide, but they can grow to be 6 feet tall and 5 feet wide. The flowers are a great attraction to many pollinators, like bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. They also come in a wide array of colors, making the plant a great centerpiece to the garden. Finally, to complete the immersion, the garden sits atop a layer of fine sand. This prevents any non-salt tolerant weeds from growing in, as well as giving it that neat effect of a sandy beach. All in all, this project cost just about $60, which included the plant, the glass, the sand, and a few seashells. Everything else was simply found exploring the wild. Well, I guess that's it. I had fun making this little project with my mom. I hope you all enjoyed watching this just as I had fun making it. And I will see you all next time. Giddy up.